Yeah, that's right. We are back. Whew. This week, I've been having a lovely old time working on the front side 5 0 grind. Okay, the front side 5-0 grind. Let's see what we're talking about. You approach the ramp with a fair amount of speed, feet in the regular stance. Carve up the transition on a slight angle, pop a wheelie whoo, up on that back truck, lock the back heel side wheel against the coping, glide in the 5-0 grind for as long as you can, and then wait on that back heel and pop her back into the transition to ride away. Now just recently I've been working on the front side 50-50 grind and it seemed like a logical step to take that into the front 5-0 grind. In my mind I'm just thinking it's the same thing only instead of grinding two trucks you're grinding round on one. However I've had a few sessions in the past where I've offered up the front side 5-0 grind on the mini ramp and I have to say that all hell broke loose. Oh my gosh. So coming into this one I decided to use the same incremental approach as I used for developing the front side 50-50 grind. My first goal was to try and get up on the coping, lock into that front side 5-0 position and then see if I could either bring it round on the tail for a re-entry or just sort of come to a stop, rearrange myself and get back in. Now this was easier said than done and in the first session there was a fair amount of carnage. Crikey, let's talk through some of the key issues I was having. So coming up the ramp, the first one was confusing pulling a wheelie and bending my front knee whilst keeping my body centred with leaning back. And I found that if I leant back to get that nose up, I just whoo, slid out onto the coping. The key with trying to get into that 5-0 position was to bend the front knee and try and keep my body centred. And to do this, it felt like I needed to actually lean forward as I went in to the front side 5-0 position. Really putting pressure on that back heel helped me to lock into the coping and getting up on that position I also found that my shoulders needed to remain in line with the coping and that sometimes meant that it felt like the nose was coming out behind me as I started to whew, stand up on that front side grind. Coming back in was pretty tricky. I managed to get a couple that pivoted round onto the tail as I ground along the coping, I found another common problem was starting to whoosh out and complete the turn that I started too early. And this meant that the wheels started sliding across the coping and also could lead me to whew, slip out. So again, it was best to try and put my weight inside the ramp a bit further than I wanted to and also forward into the grind a little bit more than I felt was comfortable. I found the biggest barrier to re-entry was just jumping off and not committing. So when I did eventually just stay on the board, I found that if I was going fast enough across that grind, everything sorted itself out and it was fine to come back in. For session two, I wanted to up the stakes. So I made my goal to try and grind across, maintaining the speed and come back in with more speed and a little bit more finesse.
As I started going faster across the coping, I found it harder to keep the nose up and keep that sort of position of the 5.0. I was finding that when I was getting the 5.0 grind, I was balanced on that back truck, but the front wheels were pretty much in line with the coping. So the board was leveled off as I slid round. That made the re-entry a lot easier but it wasn't the look of the 5.0 that I was really after. I really wanted that whoo up on its ear, full tilt boogie, oh my gosh, pulling a wheelie and around she goes. So for session three, my main aim was to see if I could get locked into that up on its ear position, bit more speed and see if I could bring some of those in looking a bit more stylish. For this third session, I really concentrated my efforts on getting the board up on its ear into that 5.0 position. To do this was quite counterintuitive and I found that the best results came from bending my front knee right up and this allowed me to keep my head and shoulders in line with the board, preferably a little bit ahead of the board to give me somewhere to sweep the 5.0 round to. I found that it felt the best when I committed a little bit further forwards into the turn and also remained a little bit further inside the turn than I felt was comfortable. When I got up into that 5.0 position, it was a case of trying to balance it on that back truck and try and bring it back in. I found that sometimes I was hitting the tail on the way back in. This didn't bother me too much. I actually got a few 5.0s round to the tail and this seemed to work okay and I did a few 5.0s that didn't stop moving and as I pivoted off the coping the tail naturally hit the coping because it sticks out quite a long way and the transition is pretty steep. I managed to get a few re-entries where the tail didn't hit and I found it was quite easy on those to <laughs> hang up a little bit. I managed to hold on to them but they certainly stopped me enough to sort of send me over the front of the board and then I had to rework it as I came down the transition. This trick really feels great when it goes right and it really sucks when it goes wrong. I would say it's definitely a level up from the front side 50-50 grind because on that one you can sort of balance your weight on the two trucks and just think about your body position in relation to the transition. On this one it brings a, another dimension of balancing both backwards and forwards on the plane of the board and also backwards and forwards in terms of your relationship with the ramp. I encountered a little bit of frustration in session three. I think this was because I'd raised my expectations of the session because I'd had a couple of good sessions making progress and I expected that to continue. Also, there was a couple of slams that exceeded my pain threshold. So I tend to find when that happens, I let out a bit of a holler. I always feel like an idiot after I've done this. I also took a little bit of time just to lie in the bowl and try and work out if everything was okay and also how to then attack and regroup and not completely lose the plot. I try and visualize this like a tiger in a cage. When the tiger's in the cage, he's got his super good vision, he's got his strength, he's got his claws to grip on, he's there working for you. 
But if you let your tiger out the cage and start roaring, all of those superpowers of the tiger are no longer there to be tapped into. So sometimes you've got to just regather the tiger, pop him back in the cage and get him working for you again. Well, that's it for the 5 grind video. <laughs> I have to say that some of this was pretty emotional and I definitely needed to be in the right frame of mind to go and beat myself up in this way. For me, pads were essential and I would hate to think what would have happened without the pads. I managed to cultivate a few good bales with this one. The first stage was to kick the board away to get it out of the way and the second one was to follow the contour of the ramp and try and knee slide and I found I could get a fairly good bale doing this. Some of my earlier bales were oh, pretty scary. The worst one being coming round to a halt in the 5-0 position and then letting go of the board and nearly standing on the board on the way back down the transition. And I had to have a strong word with myself every time I did that because I found in the past that stepping back on the board is the easiest way to oh, really get a nasty injury. I reckon hamstring, back of the head, loop out. Oh no. I've put in a few more sessions on my front side 50-50 grinds and those are getting a lot faster, longer and more fluid. And I'm hoping if I put in a few more sessions, I should be able to get those front side 5-0 grinds up to a similar standard as my front side 50-50 grinds. If you're new to the channel, feel free to hit subscribe. I make new videos every week. You can also follow me on Instagram at John Bishop Skate. As ever, my name's been John Bishop and I'm a middle-aged guy learning how to skate.